The New Testament is the complete fulfillment of the Old Testament. Hello, wonderful and beautiful people of God. This is your friend and your sister, and you're welcome back to my channel, Elizabeth Mo. This is the place where we talk about the simplicity of Christianity. And if you haven't come across my videos of seeing me ever, if it's your first time of seeing me, why not hop onto my channel, Elizabeth Mo, and see some of my videos and consider subscribing as well. And because we're going to be talking more about the simplicity of Christianity on this channel. Thank you. And talking about this Christianity is always in the center of everything that we are doing as Christians. So whether we want to pray, whether we want to do anything we want to do at all, it has to be God. We have to do it according to the will of God. Okay. We remember when Jesus was about to die, when he was about to face the most excruciating pain, the most dehumanizing, undeserved death on earth. You know what he did? He still prayed to God. And he said, God, even though I see all those things coming, <laughs> let your will still be done. This is why I, I desire that this cup be passed over me. But if, it, if it's not according to your will, I don't want it. You see, Jesus Christ even prayed that in the book of Luke 22. He prayed that. And not only that he prayed that, he also taught us to pray according to the will of God. You see, um, let's go to Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to 10. We were going to be looking at the Lord's prayer, how the Lord himself, that's Jesus Christ, how he taught us how to pray. And listen to this, let me just quickly read this. In this manner, therefore pray, and this is Jesus talking, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, Thy kingdom come, and this is the next point that I'm going to, your will be done as it is done in heaven. You see, so Jesus has taught us to always put the will of God in everything that we are doing. Now, the reason why I'm emphasizing on this will of God was actually because I did a video sometimes last day here, and this is how the video looks like. You can see it there. Now, I did this video last day, and I went back to check on the comments of people because I love reading people's comments so well. So I went back to check on the comments that people have dropped and I saw that a lot of people really understood what I was talking about. Some people were happy to leave their comments, I mean their views to actually say what was in their mind. Some people, they tried to, you know, just keep over it and just, you know, be nice with their comments. And then some people were like, I mean, this is what I understand. This is what I know about this thing. And that is perfectly okay. But I give terms of kudos to each and every one of you that have done that. And that is the reason why I am coming back to give the, um, what's it called, the answer to this question. You see, the video was actually about questions. I was asking questions about intercession. I was asking questions about should we intercede? What is intercession? How should we intercede? And why should we inter intercede? You see, the, the, so the question of should we intercede, my answer is yes. And it's going to be yes a billion times over. You get, that is my answer. How should we intercede? That was the reason why I was talking about the will of God. We would intercede by praying the will of God. And why should we intercede? Because Jesus Christ himself, he interceded. He is our role model. He is the person that we are looking at. Okay, and I will explain that to us in a minute. He, he himself, he prayed. He even prayed for us. In June, I mean, in John chapter 17, if you look at verses 1 to 26, you will see the prayers that God has said for us. Okay? He has said for us. And he said all these prayers in the will of God. He made the prayers that in the will, in the light of God wants. Now, what is intercession? Intercession is a kind of intervention. Okay, when we intervene in a person's life or in a situation, but mostly in Christianity, in quote, what we understand is that intercession is only by prayer. It's not only by prayer. That's what I'm trying to bring out. When we intervene in a situation, when you see somebody that wants to kill somebody or that wants to do something bad to somebody, it's not only by praying. You have to take preactive steps as well. So it's not only by prayer. 
Okay, so that is in intercession in Christianity. We think it's only about prayer, but it is not. Now, part of the comments that I saw was that someone was asking that the people before Jesus they they prayed and they prayed for their own will and God allowed it. So how come that it's now God Jesus is not trying to say that we have to pray according to the will of God? Well, I would like to say in this place that look. The Bible is made of the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament is the complete fulfillment of the Old Testament. I believe that if the Old Testament was complete in itself, I'm not sure we, we, we would have a need for the New Testament. So if you want to understand things like the, the creation of the world, if you want to understand things like the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses himself, if you want to well, understand things like um, the Exodus and the journey of the Israelites, things like that are found in the Old Testament. Okay, But if you want to understand the life and the teachings of Jesus Christ, who is God himself, and the Christian church, then you have to go to the New Testament. So if you now want to live a life that is exemplary, that God wants us to live, you would go to the New Testament, see what Jesus does, and then you would do exactly what Jesus does, or you will live by the way that Jesus wants you to do it. So we will not refer back. Yeah, so let me read from Hebrews chapter 1 and um, chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, you see, and you can go on and on and on. You can see where the Bible says that we are surrounded by so many clouds of witnesses. And who are this cloud of witnesses? Witnesses. That's the reason why we have to turn back to Hebrews chapter 11. And then we'll see the list of the cloud of witnesses. We've got Abel, who is a Matthias, the first Matthias in the Bible. We've got Enoch. We've got Noah, we've got Abraham, we've had the miracle child, which is Isaac himself. We have his mother, Sarah, we have Jacob, we have Moses, we have Rahab, the prostitute, who was also a spy for the Israelites. We have Gideon, we have um, Samson, we have Barak, we have Jephthah, the prophet, who is also a judge. We have David, we have Samuel, we have a lot of them. So all these people, they have come to show us that it is only by Christ, through Christ, and in Christ, can we be able to accomplish and win victories. They are not saying that we should come into their lives and see what they have done and do what they have done. They are asking us that we should look unto Jesus. And Jesus has come here. They are all pointing us to Jesus. So when we, we also are supposed to go back to Jesus and see what Jesus has done, you see? So that's just what I'm just trying to say. That is all the essence of this. The will of God, you see, in everything that we do, intervention, not only by prayer, is what we should do for people. We should not just sit down and be praying. Let's lend a helping hand. Let's be able to help people, to help others in whatever situation that we can. We are children of God. That is why we are here, here on earth, to be companions, to help one another. So the helping is not only by pushing the bulk of it only to God. Why are we on earth if we can't help one another? And that is where the, the spirit of intercession is coming out from to intervene and to help one another. So thank you very much for listening to my video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you have not subscribed, subscribe to this channel because you're going to be hearing more and more and more of this. I'm going to be telling you about myself as well. You can check out my videos about my fibroids journey if you haven't seen it. And God will bless you. Answer your prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Bye and see you next time.